Recording in progress. Good evening. We're going to be calling the Town Council Committee the whole special meeting to order on April 3rd, 2024. It is 6.03 p.m. And we have everybody present except for Councillor Merritt and Councillor Gajewski, who will be coming in on Zoom. Madam, Madam Mayor, I'm here. Thank you. Mr. Gajewski is now present, and Councillor Bloodline is also on Zoom. So, all right, so um, as a reminder, one of our budget rules are one round of speaking promotion for all councillors, and we will be resuming our new business, which is 2024-247-1, FYE 2025, proposed budget. Um, first item, first item is the finance department, account number 1013, and that is on page 93. Councilor Parker, would you like to move a number? I move $1,789,784 for account number 1013. Second. Moved. moved by Parker, seconded by Russ. Good evening. Would you Good like to introduce evening. yourself to everybody at home and sure. uh, give us a synopsis of your budget? Sure. Uh, Dee Morrison, Director of Finance. Um, so for my finance budget, I'm presenting an increase of 4.1% uh, over last year's approved budget. The majority of that increase is related to personnel expenses um, for contractual um, increases. I'm sorry to interrupt. Could you just please pull the mic a little closer? Thank you so much. Is that better? Much better, thank you. You're welcome. Um, so like I was saying, the majority of the increase is related to personnel expenses based on contractual increases for our uh, unionized staff of our 19 team members. I would say 15 of them are union. Um, the other increases that I um, could point out to you are there's some related to, um, oops, sorry, I had the wrong thing. Um, some additional training expenses that I wanted to put in there for the new deputy finance director once that position is filled in the near future, um, as well as the um, audit fees have increased for the next fiscal year. Um, there's a couple of the, the typical increases for materials and supplies um, just based on the market. Um, in the assessment office, there were a few pricing index um, tools that they use, the guides that have a, a higher cost for fiscal 25 as well. So um, I am available for any questions. Okay, then. <clears throat> any um, counselors have any questions or comments? Councilor Bordelon? Did you have your hands raised, Councilor Bordelon? Uh, it was raised from before trying to uh, say I couldn't hear. Okay. I'm not seeing any hands raised. Okay, then I, we're going to take a vote. We have account number 1013 for $1,789,784. Moved by Parker, seconded <coughs> by Rusk. And we're going to do roll call. So we will begin with Councilor Bordelon. Councilor Bordelon, your vote. Okay, we'll try and come back to Councilor Bordelon in a moment. Councilor Pacina. Yes. Councilor Rusk. Yes. Councilor Jones. Yes. Councilor McBride. <coughs> yes. Councilor Gajewski. Yes. Councilor Parker. Yes. Councilor Bordelon, are you there? Can we get your vote on the finance? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Oh, perfect. Okay, yes. Thank you. That will pass. Eight to zero to zero. Thank you. All right, next up is account 2120. That is on page 98. 
Councillor Gajewski, are you capable of reading this evening? I am capable. Just let me get to page okay. 98. Um, I move um, $156,275 for the uh, finance revaluation fund. So moved. Second, Second. Bordelon. Moved by Gajewski, seconded by Bordelon. Councillor Pacina. I just have a question. Sure. It seems, um, you know, from, from 23 to 24 estimated to 24 uh, um, adjusted to this year, a lot of fluctuation. Mm -hmm. um, what is that? You're talking about for that chart that's in the front there? Yes, ma'am. So this is an accumulating fund that is meant to um, pay for the expenses that are um, required for the state mandated revaluation that occurs every five years. So the intent is to try to, in the years that the revaluation is not occurring, build that fund balance up so when the reval year does occur, the expenses can be absorbed. It's not taking a big hit all at once. So the fluctuation you'll see is that that is the fund balance number that you're seeing there in that column, that 349,000. Um, so the drop that you're, you're noticing is because we just completed the reval in uh, 2021. So the next reval is not due till 2026. Okay, thank you. Any further questions? Okay, Doc. So we are going to vote on two twenty-one twenty for one hundred fifty-six thousand two hundred seventy-five dollars. Councilor Bordelon. Aye. Councilor Pacino. Aye. Councilor Rusk. Aye. Councilor Jones. Aye. Councilor McBride. Aye. Councillor Gajewski? Aye. Councillor Parker? Aye. All right, that passes eight to zero to zero. On to our next item, 2060, and that is on page 190. And Councillor McBride, would you like to move that number? Yes, I'd like to move the number 21,362 for the Marford Cove Special District, number 2060. Second. second. Uh, moved by McBride, seconded by Russ. All right, do we have any questions? <coughs> and just as a reminder, this is a pass through. Taxes collected in Mumford Cove, um, they pay no ink uh, fire for their fire protection. So it's what they opt for for fire protection. So. It, there's no changes that we could make to it. All right, and showing that it's got a $41 increase and a <laughs> point, point 0.2% increase. All right, I don't see any questions, so let's take a vote. Councilor Bordelon. Aye. Councilor Pacino. Aye. Russ. Aye. Jones. Aye. <clears throat> McBride. Aye. Gajewski. Aye. And then Parker. Aye. That passes eight to zero to zero. We are on to our next item, which is 4010, <coughs> which is, it is on page 194. I'm sorry, I'm flipping pages here. Um, Councilor Jones, would you like to move that number? I am moving the number for the Groton Sewer District, account number 4010, in the amount of 1,283,322. So moved. Second, Parker. Moved by Jones, <coughs> seconded by Parker. Who's going to speak on this? I can speak at all. Okay. So uh, this fund is the um, 
Right, so additional is probably for the, the debt service payments that are for the clean water fund debt that we have, as well as the, um, the pump station bond. Um, so the majority of the expenses that are within this account are the debt service payments. Um, this did decrease 2.1% um, for this uh, for the fiscal 25 budget because the debt payments, the, just the scheduled debt payments are lower. Um, some of the other costs that are in here have to do with uh, our tax office expenses pertaining to postage and because we do mail out the, um, the bills that fund um, the debt service payments, um, as well as a, um, the materials and supplies. Okay, any questions? Comments? All right, I'm gonna ask um, a quick one. There says, uh, it says interest in lien fees on the financing plan. Can you explain that? Especially the liens, basically. Um, so if there's individuals that have tax payments that are outstanding, um, then the tax office will um, bill them for interest and a lien fee of $24 would be applied to certain accounts. Okay. And it also says the pilot payment other is like $800. And how does that come into play? That is actually from um, a portion of the, um, the Odd Fellows pilot agreement that we have. A majority of it does go to the general fund, but a small piece of it does come into play for this fund. Okay, great. That's all I have. Councilor Jones. Um, just a quick question, maybe to Town Manager Burt. Can you just tell us what this was done in um, 2021? Can you just tell us what was the sewer project? What did we do? Actually, I forget offhand. Was that a pump station? Yeah, it was it, pump it, station. There was pump station uh, renovations. Yeah. Pump stations. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Interested? No. Thank you. Councilor Rask. Thank you um, <coughs> for coming tonight. Um, so just a quick question. Does this get charged to all Groton residents or only those who are within the Groton Sewer District? I believe it's within just the Groton Sewer District. Okay. What about people who are on septic within the Groton Sewer District? That is a question I can ask our tax collector and get back to you on. Okay. Even if you're on septic, it is collected. They have some other services for the materials being uh, <laughs> materials being out and posited. It kind of is intertwined with that. So yes, it is collected out. Okay. But they only, do get some service out of that. Yeah. But only residents who are within the Groton Sewer District. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Yes. No. Thank you. Okay, I don't see any other hands. So we're gonna take a vote on function 4010 for $1,283,322. Councilor Bordelon. Aye. Councilor Pacino. Aye. Councilor Rusk. Aye. Councilor Jones. Aye. Councilor McBride. Aye. Councilor Gajewski. Aye. And Councilor Parker. Aye. All right, that passes eight to zero to zero. We're on. We are now on health and service agencies, which is account number one zero eight four. Which is on page one seventy eight, one seventy nine. Um, so I will need to recuse myself for 10840 Ledge Light Health District, as well as 10845 Service Agencies. All the rest of them I'm okay with, um, but I do work with almost everyone on page 179 and Ledge Light Health District. So I will recuse myself for those parts of this discussion. All right, I'm making a note. So 10840, which is Ledge Light Health District, mm -hmm. and 10845 Service Agencies. Thank okay. You. So I don't know if you want me to read this one. In. Hold on one moment. So I was thinking how we can handle this because there's so many. We were. I think we would start on page 178. 
We'll go through each one of them. We can have them come up to our table and we will go through each one individually and we will pass the number unless members of the council would like to pass a number as a whole for all of them combined. Um, so I'm currently at the place where we'll go through them one at a time. If somebody has a reason that they would like to do them all at once, you can speak now and we can take a consensus on which way to go. Council Parker. I believe we've taken these in I believe we've taken these individually in the past. The only one we didn't do, if correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Burt, is the um, service agencies, one oh eight four five. Were we doing this? Okay. Right. And as I spoke to Mr. Burt today, he said we can do them as a whole or we can do them individually. It is there is no rule on how which way we take these. So if everybody would just like to continue with one at a time, we can do that. It's not a problem at all. I'd prefer one at a time. Sorry. Okay, then we're gonna do them one at a time. All right, so we have um, 10840 Ledge Light Health District. Come on down. <laughs> And up next, let's see who is left. <coughs> um, Council Pacino, would you like to move the number for 10840? Yes. I would like to move 291,881 for 10840 Ledger Lake Health District. Second. Second. Four to one. All right, account number <coughs> hold on a second. 10840 in the amount of $291,881. And I believe it was Councillor Parker that seconded it. Good evening. Would you like to introduce yourself and give us a quick synopsis on your budget? Sure. Hi, everybody. I'm Jen Maggio. I'm the Director of Health with Ledge Light Health District. Uh, for those of you who I haven't met before, I have been with the district for 19 years, uh, but moved last July from being deputy to director <coughs> with Steve's retirement. So happy to see you tonight and present our budget. Um, as you may know, our budget is set. Uh, we establish a per capita rate that is assigned to all of our member municipalities. Um, and that per capita rate is set by our board of directors. Groton has representation on our board, three people from the town and one from the city. Um, and we've set the per capita rate for next fiscal year to be equal to the per capita rate for this fiscal year. In addition, the population number that we're directed to use from the Department of Public Health um, is also staying flat because they've had some confusion in the Office of Vital Statistics about population changes. Um, and so in fact, we're presenting a flat budget this uh, for next fiscal year. Um, we're pleased to be the health department for the town of Groton. Uh, we were founded in the, when the town and city joined their health departments. And so, of course, although we've expanded, uh, Groton is our kind of founding home base um, and happy to continue to provide comprehensive public health services to our community members. We also receive funding in addition to the member municipal per capita uh, from the state per capita, which is unfortunately much lower than municipal per capita. And we are working with our colleagues across the state to advocate for an increase at the state level. And we work hard to secure outside grants from multiple funding streams um, and different funders in order to uh, augment the uh, local dollars and deliver uh, more broad and deep uh, public health programming. And I'm happy to answer any questions you have about our services. Thank you very much. Councilor Bordelon. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm excited to see you here tonight. I know you personally. Um, done some work with you guys on um, the HIC uh, group and Health Improvement uh, Collaborative. Um, God, it's been several years ago now. Yeah. Um, and I just have seen some of the great works that you guys have done throughout the community by helping folks get access to like things like Narcan, to COVID uh, mobile units that were stationed throughout our community. Um, and so I just want to commend you. Um, you also do a lot of things about race and inequity and inclusion. Um, so it's not just your typical health um, that people like to think as just, you know, oh, did you get your shot? Or is this place up to standard? Is this restaurant following code? Um, as far as, you know, um, 
you know, making sure things are clean and things like that. So I think when we look at this, you know, I definitely learned a lot that you really look at ways to make sure that things are equitable and fair to all. Um, also do a lot with LBG, BTQ uh, groups and um, just a lot of outreach. And, and I just, just can't say enough. Um, I do have a question. I know when folks were suffering in Brantford Manor and um, there were some limitations on what exactly uh, Ledge Light Health can do. With the possible new legislation coming out um, down the road, is there enough funding in there to be able to help if new mold standards were to change and things like that? Uh, well, thank you so much, Councillor, for your comments um, and your kind words. Um, and the answer is no. Um, <laughs> this is one of the one of the foundations for our advocacy at the state level. Um, Connecticut has passed some really terrific public health policy in our state over the last uh, 15 years or so. Um, and unfortunately, those new policies um, have not come with an increase in state funding uh, to support us implementing them at the local level. And so although those mold standards haven't been set yet, um, when they are set and when it does increase our required activity, uh, we are going to have to pay for those staff hours somehow. Um, and so we work hard to keep um, the impact on our member budgets low. Um, I will tell you that you should, uh, you know, we haven't had an increase in our per capita in a few fiscal years. Um, I would anticipate that we'll have one next fiscal year, um, but uh, appreciate any um, support anybody wants to provide for our advocacy to the state um, to make a more full investment uh, in local public health um, at the state level. Uh, thank you for that. I definitely will be advocating. And if you um, could just do maybe offline, I'll try to email you and get some information as to ways I can advocate. But uh, thank you for you know helping me to understand uh, that uh, because I do think that is extremely important in the town of Rotten after what has taken place and moving forward as we we are seeing uh, you know things you know uh, environment that you're living in as a huge health. Uh, barrier for equity and inclusion for folks that have nowhere else to go. And uh, so I, I look forward to seeing what that's going to look like and the advocacy. Um, but I thank you so much for your time. And and I, you know, I've seen you obviously very busy throughout the community. Um, and I, I think you guys are a backbone and asset to um, many local communities and towns. And, um, you know, you guys, it's almost like the, the, the calls are never turned off. You're always available. <laughs> So um, I can't say enough great things just from what I know from the inside and uh, and just very proud of the diversity, equity, inclusion aspect that you guys need to model and um, really make sure those barriers to health care um, and women's health are being heard and reached. So um, again, I think. Thank you so much. And just one thing to point out, it is uh, state law that what they set the rate at it is what you have to pay. So it's not something that could be reduced. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, I don't see any more hands up. So let's take a vote on account 108. I have one my hand up one more time, sorry. I was, I was You've already spoken once on this. Oh, that's right, it's one promotion for the budget. Yes. Thank you for reminding okay. me. Um, account number 10840 for the amount of $291,881. Um, Aye. Pacino. Aye. Uh, Rusk is an abstention. I mean, I'm sorry, recusal. Let me put this in here properly, recuse. Okay, Councilor Jones. Aye. McBride. Aye. Gajewski. Aye. And then Parker. Aye. So we have one, two, three, four, five, seven. seven to zero to zero with one recusal of Council Rusk. Thank you very much. Thank you. Up next, we have the VNAs. Thank we you. We have a, an account that has a zero amount. Show, do we have to read that one and, map, and vote on the zero? Uh, for that, hold on one sec here. Um, no. Okay. So I'm just going to cross that one out. We have the VNAs. 
Um, do we have somebody on Zoom for the VNAs, correct? Councilor Parker, would you like to move the um, account 108411? Um, make a motion for one million three hundred forty-six dollars five hundred seventy-three. One million three hundred forty-six thousand five hundred seventy-three dollars. Second, Bordelon. Moved by Parker, seconded by Bordelon. And as a reminder, though, the first one is really, uh, the, the first of the VNAs is no longer going to be provided by VNA, so she'll be speaking on the next one. Okay. Um, and these, <clears throat> I'm going to make a motion for account 108411 to put it to zero. This is the school nurses. I would like to take this out of the town side of the budget. So I will be zeroing it out. And um, it will be, I would like it to be moved to somewhere else in our budget, which will be discussed at a later time. Um, so just to note, it will have to go in the education budget. Correct. So. <coughs> Second, Jones. So moved by Franco, seconded by, uh, seconded by Jones. Discussion, Councillor Bordelon. Um, I guess I was just waiting for you just to explain why first before I went. <clears throat> that is because VNA is no longer provide, able to provide the services at the schools for the nurses. The schools, after looking at different options, have opted to employ uh, nurses themselves, which will fall in their payroll. Uh, so it, it has to be in their budget and they're fully aware of that. I just thought we were on the other line. My apologies. Um. Any more comments, questions, concerns? Okay. We'll be voting on account 108411 in the amount of zero dollars. Council Bordelon. Aye. Council Pacino. Aye. Council Rusk. Aye. Council Jones. Aye. Council McBride. Aye. Council Gajewski. Aye. Councilor Parker. Aye. I'm also an aye. That passes eight to zero to zero. Up next is <coughs> account 10842, the VNAs, health promotions. Um, Councilor Gajewski, would you like to take that one? <coughs> yes. Um, I move um, for object code 108411. Nope, uh, I'm reading the wrong one. For object code 10842, VNA health promo, um, I move $27,530. Second. Moved by Gajewski, seconded by Rusk. Do we have any comments? Oh, do we have somebody here representing? Would you like to make um, you introduce yourself? I apologize. Would you like to introduce yourself and uh, comment on your budget? Sure. Um, hi, hi there. I am Karen De DeSantis. I'm the director of of the VNA. Um, I do have a speech impediment. I am a stutterer. I, I, I think I have met m m most of you in, in the past. Uh, do not let it bother you. It doesn't bother me. Um, our budget this year um, represents about 200 hours um, in the wellness clinics for the year. Um, the rate of 87.65 is a five percent increase from la last year. Um, the as far as the blood pressure clinics and health clinics, it looks like we, we go to several sites sets several times a times a month throughout the uh, town town of Groton. Um, our 
indigent care program that this year and I'm, I'm really not sure why but we really didn't use the funds from last year so being that we didn't use the funds my my staff knew the funds were there but we we didn't have the referrals for it being that we didn't use the 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 funds we we felt it was the responsible thing to do um, to ask for less money this year um so we cut that but that re request down from 20,000 to to 10,000 i i will keep an eye on that uh the, this year and if it looks like we get more referrals again i i may ask to to, to increase that that again next year okay thank you very thank much you. Councillor Portolan. Councillor Bordelon, you have your hand up. Would you like to speak? Uh, thank you. Um, sorry, it cuts out sometimes with the weather. Apologize. Um, I just want to thank you for presenting your budget and I thank you for your due diligence and fiscal responsibility and looking at ways where you can make a savings, obviously, <laughs> where funds weren't used. Um, so I do appreciate that and thank, I thank you for your forward thinking. I also, it also does give me a concern if the furrows are down, is that good, is that bad? It'd be interesting to see what's going on in that area. Um, is it the advertising? Where, where do we need to enhance that? Um, so I appreciate that you're going to be watching that and maybe there's a way we can look at that. I just want to say how vital your services are and what you do to the community. Folks that have barriers and access, as we talked about, the health improvement collaborative before this, um, I've definitely worked with some senior uh, folks in the community and I'm um, a person who's worked in the medical uh, field for many years. Um, it's great that they can get no to low cost accessibility. And sometimes you guys are the front line finding out like, wow, you know, John, you were here a week ago and your blood pressure is trending up and you do need to go see a doctor. And a lot of people just aren't medical. During COVID and things like that, you know, folks, you know, didn't have as much access. Doctors were bogged down. People are on a lot of different medications. So this gives them a safe place to get a check-in to see if something's really going on. And sometimes you're the front line for these folks because a lot of people don't have family in the area um, and things like that. And sometimes you might be the only check-in. So um, I just can't speak enough about having that. Um, one of the barriers that were spoke about in the Health Improvement Collaborative were how a lot of our senior folks that are on fixed incomes um, sometimes choose to cut their dosing down on pills to stretch it out because they can't afford that copay, um, as well as um, omitting going to the doctors and just not paying that $25 or $50 copay and saying, mm, I feel a little dizzy, but I'm going to wait another month to not pay. So I want to say uh, I have not needed those services, but I'm happy to live in a town that has them. And I think it's a robust um, thing to have. Um, and it's so important to take care of our most vulnerable. So I can't thank you enough. I've seen you for many years from being on the RTM to here. And uh, you always come and you know give a great presentation and advocate for our most vulnerable. And um, I commend you for that. So thank you. Thank you. Councilor Rusk. Hi. Um, thank you so much, Karen, for being here. It's great seeing you again. Um, I just have one question. Where do you do your blood pressure clinics and how often? Okay, well, we we do uh, clinics at Avery Heights, Grasso Gardens, the Groton Ahepa. Um, we have a lot of time at the Groton Senior Center. Uh, we go to po Poconoc Village, uh, Solstice, um, and we do, to approximately, it looks like um, we 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 do a few few hours per per month um, in each of these places. So the Groton Senior Center, it looks like we actually go there a, about ten ten times a month. Um, so it's it's a few hours each month. Um, it looks like uh, between 13 and 18 hours a month. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I appreciate what uh, we, you guys do. Yes, and we we did see uh, we did see 773 
patients since since July one of this year. So it definitely is a very robust turnout for all of these things. Thank you. Okay, I don't see any more hands. So we're gonna take a vote on account number 10842 in the amount of $27,530. Councilor Bordelon. Aye. Councilor Pacino. Aye. Councilor Rusk. Aye. Councilor Jones. Aye. Councilor McBride. Aye. Councilor Gajewski. Aye. Councilor Parker. Aye. That passes eight to zero to zero. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, so up next we have account number 10843, the Groton Ambulance. Good evening. Would you like to introduce yourself and give us a little brief synopsis on your budget this year? Sure. Good evening. My name is Chet Kanicki. I'm the president of Groton Ambulance. Uh, we have requested $300,000 from the town council which is a 0% increase from last year. We have been able, even though our runs are a little bit down, uh, we have been able to cut some of the other programs and still maintain our public safety programs, i.e. car seat checks, CPR training, and defibrillator training, which we feel is an asset to the community. And um, through us cutting some things in our budget, we were able to maintain a 0% increase. Okay, great. Councilor McBride, would you like to move the number? Yes, I would like to move the number, account number 10843 for Groton Ambulance in the amount of 137,400. You had to put the number, you had to put the, uh, the 300,000 on the floor. Three, you almost gave the guy a heart attack. Oh, three. <laughs> Just like, I'll take that my, my highlight is wrong. Good, good thing I trained some people on a defibrillator. <laughs> we're going to rewind. <laughs> Let's rewind. Uh, 10843 ground ambulance. Uh, the number on the floor was 300,000. Second. All right, moved by McBride and seconded by Parker. <laughs> All right, I don't see any comments. We will take a vote. Council Bordelon. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, um, welcome back, and I appreciate that you're coming in at 0% this year. I know we gave mm -hmm. a substantial increase the previous year, mm -hmm. um, coming off of COVID and everything, and again, an essential part of the community. Um, you hope you never need it, but when you do, uh, you hope they show up. So uh, definitely important to keep it funded and uh, keep it, you know, uh, you know, definitely an asset to our community. Um, is there any other costs? Are things starting to stabilize post COVID? I know that like a lot of um, the stuff was at a high end and hard to get. Now you're able to get a lot more of the things, you know, some things are still kind of back ordered, but is there anything driving any costs or anything you can speak to in that area? So right now, um, first off, last year our budget was 300000 The year before that, it was 360000 because that was COVID expenses. So we went down 60000 So it's the same as last year. The year before is when it was increased. Um, our major problem right now is staffing. And we're seeing this nationwide throughout all the healthcare system. Um, COVID has had lasting effects People don't want to go in other people's houses. They don't want to take care of other people. They don't want to put their family at risk. There is a national EMT shortage. There's a paramedic shortage. There was just a, an article, um, a story on one of the news channels about New Haven is having problems. We've been looking for other ways that we can increase our manning. And uh, one of the things that we just did was uh, a paid internship with Fitch High School. Their students in the EMT class. Um, we just hired four of them as interns so that they can um, get real world experience while they're waiting to pass their EMT test. And then a couple of them are staying local. So while they're going to school locally, they'll be able to work for us part time. So we're doing things a lot differently, but so far, uh, knock on wood, we've been successful and been able to answer the call um, 24 seven. Uh, thank you. Yeah. I'm really familiar with the, 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 uh, internship program at the high school. And I think that is a great asset to have. Um, so I, you know, they have also the CNA program, so it's great to have, 
uh, workforce ready careers, as I call them. Uh, not everyone's going to college right away or to college ever and to have the accessibility within our community to serve our community is uh, very vital. So um, I love that idea and I love that that's going on and I appreciate uh, your comments. Thank you. Councillor Jones. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you for being here. Uh, you talked a little bit about uh, reduction of some of your services to help deal with the uh, um, the less runs and, and revenue that you're having. Can you just talk a little bit about what some of those services are that you've reduced? So, um, go to my budget. Since we're getting less runs, um, you can take a look at the wear and tear on the vehicles, number one. So, line item, I know our fuel went down, medical repairs went down, uh, disposable supplies went down significantly from 54,000 to 35,000. Um, unfortunately, this is a year for PM contracts where we have to pay for all of our striker equipment, which is our stretchers, our power loads, uh, our Lucas devices, and our stair chairs. Um, Another um, deduction was our insurance liability went down by $6,000 due to um, lack of claims. Um, our, where was it? Hmm. That one. Billing agent. Um, went up because that's because of the revenue coming in they get an extra amount um, we eliminated a lot of um, our wellness programs were zero awards and ceremonies COVID testing went to zero um, license and renewals we have a we found a um, online portal for training and stuff so we don't have to pay for that so that was a big one. Oh, you know what this is not the right budget because this has the original $327,000 which I cut to $300,000 so I apologize I am looking at the wrong budget. But those are things you've done. You've sort of looked for savings across the board. Oh, yes. You can do it. Fine. Yes. Okay. Because our um, labor went up because of inflation and because it's harder to keep EMTs because they can work for us or they can work for another service and that other service is offering incentives to bring them there and private services like American Ambulance or AMR, I can't compete with a huge conglomerate like that. So I have to do other things to make my employees happy with, um, we use 5% uh, 401k. We do uh, offer an amazing healthcare program. So we've found ways to keep the good individuals we have and still try to attract individuals. But it is a problem across the board. People are still getting burnt out and run ragged from that. Um, and I apologize for having the wrong budget. I, a, usually okay. I don't. I, I, re I remember during the COVID when you came, you would talk about the equipment costs and the huge costs that because of COVID, you had to replace things quickly and uh, the, the things wear and tear on it that would happen because of the chemicals and things. Is that still going on? So, Is that still going on or have you sort of got, gotten through that? At the beginning of COVID, it feels like forever ago, but there, the CDC only approved certain disinfectants for the use, and those disinfectants were ammonia-based, and they were degrading our equipment at a rapid pace. We were fortunate to get some ARPA funding to replace some of the more expensive stuff, 
Um, and since we know more about COVID now, they've changed the disinfectant um, requirements. So we're using less harmful um, products that don't degrade our equipment as fast. Unfortunately, we did with what we knew at the time and we tried to be as safe as possible. And in the long run, it was bad for our um, yeah. equipment, but better be safe than sorry when you're dealing with people's lives. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay, I don't see any more hands. Let's take a vote on this. 10843 in the amount of 300,000. Councilor Bordelon. Aye. Councilor Pacino. Aye. Rusk. Aye. Jones. Aye. McBride. Aye. Gajewski. Aye. Councilor Parker. Aye. I'm also an aye. That passes eight to zero to zero. Thank you very much. Thank you. Up next is our service agencies. This is account 10845. And Councilor Jones, do you want to move the number? Account 10. Let's get the right number. Account 10845 service agencies. The number is. 137,486, so moved. Second. Moved by Jones, seconded by Parker. So we have numerous people here for this. Um, maybe we can go through the whole, we should go through the list and have them introduce themselves and give a quick synopsis on uh, their budget. Um, shall we start with the New London Hospitality, Homeless and Hospitality Center? I believe they are on Zoom. John. Yes, hello, can you hear me? Yes, would you like to introduce okay, yourself? Hi. This is, uh, I'm Kathy Zoll uh, from the New London Homeless Hospitality Center. Uh, we wanna thank you for all of Groton's support. Basically, we're seeking your assistance. Uh, the state funding that we receive for the emergency shelter uh, covers about 60% of our costs so we have to raise the remaining 40% from private sources and, and local governments. And we are uh, requesting your assistance to continue to offer uh, emergency overnight shelter to residents of Groton who find themselves uh, facing homelessness. Happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you so much. We also have SCAD. I believe they are on Zoom, is that correct? Hi, yes, Jennifer Chidukowitz here. Thank you so much, Chief Strategy Officer at SCAD. And I wanted to thank you, uh, much like my friend and colleague, Kathy Zoll, we're very grateful for the contribution that you carve out for us every year. We provide a continuum of care for substance use disorder treatments and provide services for residents of Groton, anywhere between 100 to 150 residents of Groton every single year. Um, I'm glad to answer any questions as well. Okay, thank you. Safe Futures. I believe they're also on Zoom. She is. <coughs> Hello? Hello, would you like to introduce yourself and uh, a little synopsis on your budget? <coughs> Question? <laughs> support of our service. I think you're breaking up. Ms. Sosoloff, can you hear us? Can you hear me? We can now. Would you like to introduce yourself and give a synopsis? I'll try again. I'm
we can't hear you, Margaret. You know what, we're having a little difficulty hearing you, so we'll try and come back to you. I'll make a note. Um, the ARC. Hello. Hi. My name is Denise Tift. I am the Director of Community Outreach with the ARC Eastern Connecticut. Um, the program that you guys support for, um, for us each year. Point of information, could you pull up the microphone closer to you so I can hear you? Thank you. Um, Sorry about that. Is that. No, is that better? Perfect, thank you. You're welcome. So the program that um, we request funding for is our Community Life and Advocacy Program. It's a program that supports people with intellectual and developmental disabilities be full and active participants within their community. Um, this program, uh, our grant that you're um, providing is um, to augment the funding that we receive from other sources. Um, a lot of our money is raised through fundraising <coughs> and grant write, writing from various towns and stuff. There's 139 participants to this program, many of which are very active and um, reside right here in the town of Groton. Some of our most active participants are in Groton. There's 39 of them. Um, we have a business here in Groton. We have programmings. We have houses, residential homes, all within our community. So um, the assistance that the town gives us goes in many ways to support a lot of different things. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. Um, we have, thank you. Thank you. Um, you might want to wait in case we have questions coming up. We're just going through all the interview process. Um, we also have Connecticut Legal Services, but they have not responded to your email. Is any, nobody is present? That's not all. Okay. UCFS, Behavioral Health Services. Um, <coughs> we have somebody on Zoom. No, they're not in attendance. I don't see the name. Okay. We will move on to Always Home. We have somebody on Zoom, I believe. Yep. Okay. Hi, my name is Katherine Keller. I'm from Always Home. Um, our mission is preventing family homelessness. And the amount that we're seeking is to help us um, with homelessness prevention and shelter diversion programs that will directly benefit Groton families. At this time, we've seen nearly a 30% increase in need just in Groton alone. Um, and we are seeking a 26% increase in our funding that we has been pretty stable over the years where our numbers have increased. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Monos is now the last one is on now. From Cheryl, yes. UCFS. Yes. UCFS, would you like to introduce yourself and give us a synopsis on your budget? Hi, can you hear me now? Yes. Hi, good evening. I'm sorry, I was here, I was shouting into the void, but you, <laughs> you couldn't hear me. Uh, my name is Cheryl Munoz. I am the development manager at UCFS Healthcare. Uh, we are a federally qualified community health center providing behavioral health services, dental, medical, and adult day services to residents of Groton. Uh, we provide care to everyone um, regardless of ability to pay. Uh, so we do not turn anybody away for any of those services. Okay, thank you. Thank uh, you. Sexual Assault Crisis Center of Eastern Connecticut. Um, uh, she's not able to attend. Uh, always home, I think you, Kathy Keller, I think you Did jumped you, over that one. No, no I, I already spoke. Oh, sorry, Miss this, sorry. It's Safe Futures. I, I can speak we again back. if it I was we impactful. Backwards. Yes, I'm sorry right. about that. Okay. <laughs> Meals on Wheels, TVCCI. Good evening. My name is Eugene Theroux, um, the Director of Nutrition Services for TVCCA. We are a community action agency 
uh, that provide services uh, in all of uh, Eastern Connecticut. Uh, thank you for letting me speak on behalf of the Nutrition Services Program and Meals on Wheels. A little bit about our program um, and the benefits and what we do. The seniors of Groton, like most communities, prefer to stay in their home and age in place. By providing a meal to someone who's homebound and unable to go to the store to buy food, helps reduce illness, food insecurity, and malnutrition. Because TVCCA personally delivers the meal to the senior, we help reduce loneliness and social isolation through the relationships that are developed with those we serve. In most cases, the delivery person is the only person the homebound senior sees that day, and studies show that a lot of seniors only see family and friends on average of once a month. Today, I know that the delivery person is the only person a homebound senior sees on a regular basis. The reason why I'm asking for support from the town of Groton is that the Meals on Wheels program is partially funded through Senior Resources, Senior Southeast Area Agency on Aging. And we also ask for seniors for a voluntary contribution to help, uh, but we do not require one. In most cases, we do fall short of the $3 per meal we ask for. The funding source primarily pays for the food cost and preparation of the meals. The additional funds are needed to help offset the cost of the TVCCA employees that deliver the meals to the seniors of Groton. Last year, we delivered um, a hot daily meal to 104 homebound seniors. Um, that was about 17,668 meals um, at a cost to TVCCA of a, a little over $175,000. Um, I do thank you for your consideration and your continued support of our program and the seniors of Groton. Thank you. Thank you. And my name is Josh Kelly. I can chime in here. I'm the CEO of TVCCA. Um, thank you, Eugene, for speaking to the program. I just also want to highlight for uh, the council members here that TVCCA, while we are requesting money for the senior nutrition program um, for home delivered meals, uh, today we do provide a myriad of different services for the town of Groton um, and its residents. That includes employment and training programs, early childhood education uh, with an early childhood education center in your town, um, and, and actually in collaboration, of course, with the town of Groton. Um, uh, through through a lease of, of uh, land. Um, we have housing services, um, self-sufficiency and emergency services, as well as uh, women, infant, children services. Um, we serve 2,512 clients in Groton uh, in 2023, in our, in our last fiscal year. Um, that totals about $3.3 million worth of investment. Uh, in terms of money coming back into the Groton community to people in need, um, money being spent uh, through our various programs in the service of uh, these 2,512 clients. Um, so we are very happy to continue ser offering these services. Just want to make sure that you understand the context of TVCCA in your community. Uh, happy to answer any questions, just like Eugene said, um, and very grateful to have continued support from the town of Groton for the Senior Nutrition Program and Meals on Wheels. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, up next is Children's First Groton. Hi, my name is Susan Radway. I'm co-chairperson of Children First Groton, Groton's Early Childhood Collaborative. We work uh, with a multitude of partners from the town of Groton or those serving uh, Groton residents uh, to assure that children are uh, healthy, strong, able to learn, and are living in strong families. And we do that through the identify identification of needs within the community and the development of initiatives with partners uh, that make that, that allow us to address those needs. So that first project was prescription to read with books uh, distributed at well child visits at doctor's offices to more recently emergency gift cards that the police officers are able to distribute when they meet uh, our call to a home for an emergency during after hours and formula diapers, food, gas are needed and then the community policing officers go back to the home in the morning and work out more permanent solutions to the challenges the families are having. There's a variety of other things that are taking place. Most recently, community conversations to identify where parents feel um, there could be more services or assistance or programs for them to uh, better uh, address the needs of their children and their families in the community. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Um, you know what, I'm going to try back with um, Safe Futures. Are you able to um, get, th get through now on Zoom? Um, 
I do hear you. Do you hear me now? We can hear you now. Okay, thank you. Um, so I'm Margaret, I'll try this again. <laughs> I'm Margaret Susloff and I am the Chief Operating Officer at Safe Futures. And we do thank um, the Town of Groton for the continued support we've received. We, we serve overall 10,000 victims of domestic violence, sexual assault, stalking, <clears throat> trafficking throughout Southeastern Connecticut in Groton. We serve about 1,200 people. And that's um, through counseling, through court support services, through our residential programs, like our emergency um, domestic violence shelter and many other services. So we are there for victims. We also work with police. Our um, law enforcement advocate does work with police. And um, so we, unfortunately our need is still needed and we're there whenever um, it is. Thank you. Thank you. Thames River Heritage Park. Hi, my name is Catherine Foley, Executive Director of Thames River Heritage Park. And I am here to request your continued support for the operation of the water taxi, which supports um, Groton and New London and the 21 heritage sites in the park. And our ongoing commitment to really, um, to economic development by promoting tourism via the park um, and the Discover the Thames campaign. And more recently in the last three years, the Dosen Academy, which of which we have about um, 70 graduates who are now serving as ambassadors and uh, promoting the park and working on really enhancing the visitor experience when people come to the region. Your continued support as is that of the city of New London and the city of Groton really um, desperately needed to, to maintain the operation, to maintain the programming <coughs> that we do in support of the heritage sites and also the water taxi operation. Um, and, and it's greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Mayor, could yeah. we ask everybody else to mute that has, that's not speaking? If anybody is online, um, if it's possible, if you can mute your um, Zoom, um, if you're not speaking, thank you. Um, up next is Southeastern Connecticut Cultural Coalition. Good evening. Hi, I'm Deb Mathison, Assistant Director of the Southeastern Connecticut Cultural Coalition, and I'm here on behalf of Executive Director Wendy Vincent, um, who took over about six months ago for our previous Executive Director, Wendy Berry, who you may remember seeing last year. Um, we're requesting the same amount of support as previous years, and that is to continue our municipal services work in Groton and other municipalities in Eastern Connecticut. What we do is enhance economic development by being the liaison between municipalities and the arts and culture community. Um, some examples of, of things we've done are consulting with town and city staff on public art, beautification, and we do work with those considering cultural districts in uh, Eastern Connecticut, uh, provide advice um, to, to pursue that uh, designation with the state of Connecticut, a, a new uh, tool in the toolbox for municipalities to enhance their uh, promotion of uh, cultural districts. Um, this week also, we've been connecting New London County officials with data that has been gathered, um, arts and economic impact data showing $183 million in economic activity generated by local arts and cultural entities and nonprofits within our communities. Um, the other uh, part of the work that we do is provide free professional development and grant writing support to those in your communities, the artists, nonprofits, and for-profits to help them take advantage of uh, potential opportunities. <clears throat> That's just a quick synopsis of, of things we do that are impacting uh, the town of Groton. Okay, great, thank you. Up next is the Eastern Connecticut Conservation District. I have that. We did not get a reply for that one. Okay. And then the Gemma E. Moran United Way Labor Food Center. <coughs> Good 
Good evening. Thank you for having us here tonight. Um, let me close it off. Um, I'm Annie Stockton, the Vice President of the Gemma E. Moran United Way Labor Food Center, um, and I appreciate you opening up this funding um, to us this year. So for those who don't know, the Gemma Moran Food Center is a program of United Way of Southeastern Connecticut. We've been around for 35 years, and um, we actually started, we started 35 years ago when there was a worker strike at Electric Boat, and Gemma Moran, who was our founder, recognized the need to bring food to the community because um, they weren't getting a paycheck. So what started as a small program um, for striking workers is now a food bank, uh, a New London County-based food bank that serves all of New London County. We have um, 72 member programs that shop for free for food um, at our, our food center. Um, programs include uh, food pantries, community meal sites, uh, daycare programs, uh, churches, municipalities, schools, um, and we uh, resource or source and um, distribute over 2.1 million pounds of food throughout New London County. Um, so the, the funding we are asking for tonight will um, help us to really provide more robust services in Groton. Um, we have uh, between nine and 10 different programs that we serve in Groton that shop at our food bank for food for their pantries. But we recognize all over the county, we have seen over a 20% increase in need over the past year for folks that need food. With the price of everything increasing, um, including food, it's just been really difficult for families, even working families, to be able to afford food. So to meet the need of the programs, and specifically the programs in Groton, we would like to be able to provide them more food at the pantries. We recently expanded our services in Groton, so we now uh, work with Ledge Light and the REC to, we, there's a new pantry that just opened, um, and we also worked with Groton Middle School to open a pantry, so we're trying to provide more robust services to this community, and this funding would really help us to be able to get what they need, so 100% of this funding will go towards those programs that we serve in Groton. Okay, thank you. And that is it for this list. Um, do you have any counselors that have questions, comments? comments. Councilor um, Parker. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I just want to thank everyone for all the work you do for the residents and fully support you guys. And thank you. I just thank you. Councilor Bordelon. Actually, Councillor Gajewski's hands was up before mine. Councillor Gajewski, would you like to speak? Sure, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, just one quick question for um, the New London Homeless Hospitality Center. Um, do you know what percentage of Broughton residents um, come and use your service? I know it could be very on the month or very on the year. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's difficult to say exactly because as people slide into homelessness, they, they tend to, you know, move closer to services like the meal center and other places like that. Um, but it's, it's probably, you know, 10-15%, um, you know, probably their last address would have been in Groton, something in that range. Okay, thank you. And have, has that been an increase over the years? Um, in, I'd have to look years? that. I'd have to look that up for you. Um, I don't know off the top of my head. I'm sorry. We have a lot more. We're serving a lot more people, including a lot more seniors. So it wouldn't surprise me if we are getting more people from Groton, uh, just because we have more people who were stably housed and have now, with the increasing prices, found themselves facing homelessness. But I'd have to get those numbers for you. Uh, and research that. All right, well, thank you for coming today um, and thank you for answering my questions, Mr. Your ability. And um, I do uh, just wanna thank all of these services uh, that they provide, uh, that um, these agencies provide for our community um, and helping our uh, residents get the services they need and support um, in difficult times. So thank you to all and I will be in favor of this budget. Thank you. Councilor Bordelon. Uh, my first question is to the town manager. Can you tell me what the actual requested amount last year were for these items, each line item? Uh, I don't have the request. I only has, have is the adjusted that's in the in your budget book. 
were any of them caught last year? I can't Does say the off the top of my head. Have it in front of them, perhaps. I'm sorry. What is the question? So in the budget book, we have the adjusted amount that was given to all the outside agencies last year, and I'd like to know what the requested was, just to you know see if anything's been cut. Point of information. Point of information. Can we discuss a previous year's budget? Yeah, we can. Okay, just to. <coughs> Mr. Bird, are you looking for that information? We were trying to open it. We we're trying to. What they requested. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the, the requests for last year for FYE 2024 from outside agencies um, was $112,048. And both that was the town council number and the RTM number as well. So no, was, there were no cuts I, last year. I was asking for what was the requested number. That's from the total number from the outside agents. That's who you're saying. There was no cuts last year. No cuts. Perfect. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, I. This is one of the areas that's most near and dear to me um, because it really directly encompasses the directly impact of our community. When we look at our community, we look at all the different levels. And if you're not funding these, then you're not funding your base. And it's so vitally important. Um, especially when coming off of uh, the heels of COVID, when a lot of people are still struggling to find the way up um, out. So I just want to commend you all. I've done some work with ARC in the past and, you know, done stuff with TVCCA, UCFS, um, and many of these um, on here, Meals on Wheels. I mean, it, it's just the foundation of our community and it really targets some of the most vulnerable uh, folks who need services to build themselves back up. Um, so I just want to individually thank you all for all the hard work that you do and your advocacy. Um, you know, I've attended some of the fundraisers for Always Home and many of the things. And, you know, you guys are out there in the community doing the people's work. And, um, you know, a lot of the folks who you know, do this do it out of the kindness of their heart because a lot of this stuff is sometimes nonprofit. And um, so, again, um, when we look at the town of Groton, we do not have a homeless shelter. And we don't have a lot of these services embedded in our own you know community so we have to go outside so it's it's so important um in the past since i've been involved for the last six years from rtm to council many people used to say and there was times that they would try to cut these line items on the rtm and say let's not fund them their outside resources are not part of rotten and i would say where are you going to go if you become homeless where are you going to go if you need these services outside services are there so again we must continue to fund these things and uh, i'm happy to see because there has been years where people did try to cut and the requested amount came in lower so i wanted to make sure that your requested amount was not lower than the previous year so again thank you to all of you individually i commend you and um i hope that the other communities um continue to support you one of my questions is to the thames river heritage park um, do you offer any uh, discounted tickets for, to people maybe in need or on a fixed income? I'm not at this time, but it is something we're considering. For instance, um, it was a ha Halloween Town event done on the waterfront park. And instead of giving candy, we gave out complimentary um, vouchers for harbor cruises. And so there's opportunity <clears throat> to really look at that. We also offer um, we also have some funding for educational uh, programming that we do and whatnot. So I'm very open to looking at that and really working with any of the nonprofits to, to make that happen. I commend you for that. That's something um, I think is vital. People have, you know, um, they should have access to ride that, that taxi over. I know I utilized it several times and it's great to go to dinner. And I just think that I wanna make sure since it's state funded that it's really, and it's being funded by the town that it's accessible to everybody at every income level. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely, I totally agree. And I, if you wanna reach out to me, I'm willing to help uh, you know, advocate for that in any way I can. Well, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have other comments?
All right, I will comment on this one. This is a, um, typically is the longest topic item that we usually have a discussion on. And it's, um, people are very passionate with certain items on this list. I also have, um, I would probably seem like the bad guy, but um, it seems to be that it is what we call an outside agency, and but it also affects so many people. But we also have things within our community that if we are cutting many things within our budget that are coming up, that um, while I would like to give you all what you ask for, as well as even more because of situations going on, I would like to move a number. Um, and it is basically the adjusted FYE 2024 number plus 10,000 for the Gemma E. Moran, which comes up to um, 122,048 dollars. Point of clarification. Do I have a second? McBride will second. Moved by Franco. Seconded by McBride. Could you please repeat the number? The number is 122048. Point of clarification. Your point of clarification. Your point of information. Or point of information. Um, can you just repeat what you stated because I didn't come clear to me? And can you just let me know where the monies are, where, where the lines are coming from? It is on page 179 in your book. It is the adjusted FYE 2024 numbers plus 10,000 for the Gemma E. Moran, which totals up to $122,048. If I'm understanding that correctly, they requested $20,000 and you're just um, offering ten, so that's the only difference. Mm. It is the FYE 2024 column total from last year and then adding $10,000 to the Gemma E. Moran. Okay, thank you for clarifying. Thank you. Do you have any comments? Councillor Parker. Um, I'm actually gonna vote against this number because we did find out there's some situations going on in our town. Most of these, there's been an increase of everything. Health services, mental services, abuse all of these have been affected since covid and it's getting worse people are homeless people are don't have enough food to eat at i help volunteer at the food bank and we serve 300 plus that's not including the food pantries within our school system and other food pantries 300 plus families every month are hurting um, I am not comfortable with this number at all. Thank you. Councillor Bordelon. Um, I have to take a deep breath. I'm, you know, uh, and I'm trying to, I'll say this as respectfully as I can. Um, I might have to even go live cam on this one. I cannot in good faith support this. I, I it makes my stomach turn um, and actually stirs up some emotion for me because um, overwhelmingly people and minorities were affected by COVID and a lot of people throughout our community and these services affect and fund our most vulnerable. There's been years in the past where people were trying to cut ARC, um, you know, and I just I can't even cutting the food bank down when they said they have almost a 30% increase and now saying we'll give them 10 and flat funding others. I cannot in good faith leave here tonight and I encourage our council, yes, there's places you can make cuts. Let's start looking at those areas. Some places are asking for t uh, 10 and 15% increases um, in other areas. That's where we should be looking. You know, in my opinion, I speak as a loan counselor I can't speak for everybody else. You don't go cutting the outside resources in a time of need. You cut other areas within our agencies where people like our town manager who did hold his raise this year. That's where you ask for people to start cutting. And I just hope if this passes, when we get to those other agencies that are internal, 
public safety, at all the other agencies up and down that we're going to go through, Parks and Rec, which I don't want to cut, I'm not advocating for. Are you going to give those cuts to them too? This is our most vulnerable. We, as a town of Rotten, should be embarrassed, in my opinion, that we don't have a shelter. We don't have all these things. When people become homeless, they have to leave their community. I can't in good faith. And in fact, I would like to see this increased. Because many times I don't think it's fair that some are asking for more and others haven't. And I respect that they didn't. But the, but $4,000, 1500 to ARC? Why aren't we giving them 20, 20, 2500 I'm just really shocked and a little overwhelmed by the cuts and flat funding on this. This is not the area in our community that I can stand to see cutting. And I encourage this council to not support this line item and dig deep in your pockets to cut in other areas. Also, as we spoke, we, we've heard, you know, re, you know uh, utilities, moratoriums are being stopped. Um, I know my grocery bill has gone up um, 75 to $85 a week alone. My gas has gone up, car repairs, and now we're gonna cut these. I, I just, in good faith, cannot, this is the type of stuff that keeps me up at night when you when we're cutting this type of stuff and uh, and myself as a I don't, anyway i've said enough please don't support that cut thank you councillor gajewski thank you madam mayor um i also cannot support this cut um the reason i can't support this cut is um these are our um, these outside agencies are our partners um they fill in the gaps um where our um services cannot and um if we would i would love to expand our own services but these services do provide a resource to our community and i don't want to see um some of the programs uh i know it's a slight increase i know it's i think it's only about three agencies that are affected by this um proposal but even those three agencies i don't feel um comfortable um making this cut as these are our partners in our community um, even though they are not um, under town jurisdiction and the town, I just, I can't, I cannot support this cut. So thank you. Thank you. Council McBride. Yes, thank you. I, I appreciate the motion. And to be honest, I had some notes written to be honestly, had some similar notes to what Council Franco had in that I think the reasoning, I can't speak for her, but I think, you know, we've made numerous reductions or, or tried to make some reductions to the budget because the budget isn't, dire shape you know we need to save a couple of million dollars so we're you know we're looking at twenty thousand here twenty thousand here and i think for this one here the twenty thousand what really stuck out for me uh the other four you know it adds up to almost five thousand dollars so it's not substantial but seeing the twenty thousand pop out was a was an eye awakener i was thinking of making a similar motion but then i heard you you explain how you're providing all these support for Groton, and it's somewhat new to Groton, so i'm kind of in support of your number i guess my question is you've been providing support for Groton residents in the past and not soliciting funding from the town? Okay, so this is like a catch up or I'm just trying to think of your overall budget here. Um, I mean, I, I would say it's it's a combination, it's a catch up. Um, it's also that we're expanding services in Groton. The need is growing. Um, and we have, we have um, reached out to and have received funding from the other larger towns, Groton, New London, um, and this is just an avenue that we we always try to not take care of it ourselves if we can, um, and and we're just at a point now where we're trying to really reach out to all the municipalities to say, hey, we could really use some help from from the towns to make this work because we are supporting most all of the pantries and all of our municipal you know in our towns in the in the region. So. Um, so is that, does that answer your question? It does. It's, really yeah, it's, kind of a, it's kind of a confusing question that I asked. Just that, you know, I would have thought maybe this would have been an ARPA, ARPA utilization of funding versus popping in this this year because it's a large jump, but they, that's here nor there. Um, so I, I struggle with a big jump like that. I'd like to see an, an increase as, the, as Mayor Franco recommended. But I think with your explanation on you really utilizing it for Grind and you're coming into Grind and doing more services, I'll support it. But, uh, you know, I understand where the, the motion came from, that it's a big number we're trying to cover if we can. But I thank you for your service and I thank everyone. I think the others, the other four agencies would have a thousand. To, I don't think it's material impact to make a change. So I'll be supporting the original motion. But I do understand where it came from. So thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Burt, are we also putting, and I know this is touching on another 
line item, but this has to do with the human service aspect of it. We are also creating another $30,000 account to put in for food securities or whatever needs at the human services this year. Is that correct? On yeah. top of these uh -huh. needs? Is that correct? But more broadly, yes. It, Thank you. Thank not you. just for food. Oh, I can't talk about Councilor Jones. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I know when my budget book came out and started to review it, I was somewhat looking at the, the 2024 numbers as, as maybe a place to go with this. Um, but I think some of the news that we've had this week of, I think it's 85 families are gonna be um, homeless. They will probably be interacting with all of these services in some way, because their lives are all gonna go in crisis. So I think these, are important and important services to Groton. Um, I also work, or volunteer, don't work, but I volunteer with the United Way Food Pantry every month and I have for the last couple of years. Um, and I'm well aware of the 300 plus families that come um, every single month to the uh, St. John's over in the city. <clears throat> I think it's a tremendous service. Um, we give a lot to help all those people and uh, there's, there's a lot of need going on there. So I will be supporting the original motion that's on the floor, and uh, I think it's well deserved. And um, as Councilor McBride said, most of these haven't changed at all, so I think it's pr it's pretty minimal. Thanks. Thank you. Any other comments? All right. Well, seeing that my fellow councilors um, are not supportive of my motion, I will be withdrawing it. But I would also like to say that. Um, as we look at the big picture thing, big picture of our budget is that if we do not um, make cuts and we increase our budget um, with the, um, the mill rates that we're looking at, um, many of our residents will be seeking out a lot more of your services. So I just hope that the council does consider that as well. Um, all right, like so I withdraw my anymore. motion. Council Bordelon, I'm, I'm speaking. I am Sorry, I am withdrawing my motion. The number on the f uh, I'd like uh, to McBride, make a motion you... for the floor. So, Councilor Bordelon, I'm trying to speak. Please just can you wait a moment? Just bear with me I... one line till it cuts out. I am withdrawing my motion. Council McBride, would you withdraw your second? Yes. Thank you. Councilor Bordelon, would you like yeah, to Yeah, I'd like to actually throw another motion on the floor. Um, I'd like to throw down 140,000, 140,486. That, and then I don't have to wait for a second. Um, I'm sorry, Council Bordelon, I can't hear what you're saying. Oh, I um, would like to add $1,000 to all the accounts with the exception of the new one. It's no discrimination since the new one, since they're coming no. in at 20,000. No, I think I think all the other uh, lines have been flat funded for so long. So my well, I don't need an explanation. One. I need you to just explain your number. Sure, so it's sure. 140,000, is that what you said? $486, yeah. And which one are you increasing? I'm increasing all of them except for the 20,000 which is the new account this year. Madam Mayor, she needs a second before we got into, get into this. Well, well, that doesn't add up mathematically. Point of information. I'll recount it. Just give me a moment. What is your point of information? There's no second so she cannot discuss it. I know, but her number doesn't add up mathematically. 13, 13, I'm giving it a moment. 13,000 of that is what? Councillor Bordelon, are you speaking with somebody? Not. I'm looking at my own numbers here. Um, I do live in a house with other people that live here, so um, my number is 150,480. My apologies. It's it 486 or 480. 86, sorry. Do we have a second? I don't have a second, Council Bordelon. That's okay. It's good, good to have it on the record, though. Thank you. 
All right, we're back to our main motion of $137,486 on account 10845, moved by Jones, seconded by Parker. We're going to do roll call. Council Bordelon. Absolutely. Councilor Pacino. Aye. Councilor Rusk. Oh, she is recused. Councilor Jones. Yes. Councilor McBride. Yes. Councilor Gajewski. Yes. Councilor Parker. Yes. All right. One. That passes seven to zero to zero. Thank you all very much and good luck and um, best wishes to all of you and thank you for helping the people in our community. Thank you very much. Could I thank you. Thank, thank you, everyone. I, thank you. Could I ask for a five minute before we thank go to you. our next? I'm account? sorry, are you asking for like a five minute recess? Yes, please. Well, as we never take a five minute recess, I will give you 10. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>
We're back from recess at 7.48. We are on to account 10847. And we are up to Councillor Rusk, would you like to take that one? Sure. Um, account 10847, Marine Sewer Disposal. Um, I move the number $19,980. Second, Parker. Motion by Rusk, seconded by Parker. Good evening. Good evening. Pete Chapman from uh, Pete's Marine Service. Uh, we do pump up boats for the Mr. River, David River Fishers Island. Um, I think you guys know most of the story. Um, the number again was is held. Um, and we've had that same number since we started in 2012, I think it was, we started taking doing this. So um, we did that, you know, we have, we have our increases. Of course, payroll going up because of the minimum wage. Um, our total budget for this year is uh, right about $250,000. That includes one new motor. Um, so our portion that we have to come up with is about $63,000 that we have to come up with to match from what the state gives us. Okay. So, any questions? Does any counselors have questions? I think many of us have been here for a while and understand, <laughs> understand the very importance of this account. All right, we will take a vote. Councilor Bordelon. Aye. Councilor Pacino. Aye. Councilor Rusk. Aye. Councilor Jones? Aye. Councilor McBride? Aye. Councilor Gajewski? Aye. Councilor Parker? Aye. All right, that passes eight to zero to zero. Great, thanks for your support. Thank you. All right, up next, we have the Mystic River Ambulance. And we have Councilor Pacino, would you like to move that number? Yes, I would like to move. <coughs> 85,000 for account 104, I'm sorry, 10848 Mystic River Ambulance. Second, Jones. 85,000. 85, All right, we have <clears throat> moved by Pacino, seconded by Jones. Good evening. Hello. Would you like to introduce yourself and give us a synopsis on your, your budget? Yep, my name is Michael Gilman. I'm the president of the Ambulance Association. And I want to preface this book by saying that I'm also a full-time Town of Groton employee for this July will be 27 years. Um, we asked for 85,000, which is a $10,000 increase. Um, actually on the budget I submitted to the town manager, there is a mistake. It doesn't affect the bottom line. Um, under em the employment, the personnel office, I forgot to put in the overtime, which was $35,000 for the actual fiscal year 23. And uh, we've had to raise it to 45,000 because we've seen a decrease in some of volunteers because they've gone to a PA school, they've had children, some people don't want to volunteer anymore. So we've had to uh, put a few more paid staff on the weekends which is generating over time. And after I submitted this, we've also had our generator break, which is a $17,000 repair and the temporary generator that we have now to power the building run lights like this. It's $850 a week. That was an un unexpected expense. So for the new counselors, um, ambulance services in Connecticut, when you bill, you can bill the state rate. So if you're in Groton, Mystic, Salisbury, Washington, you build a state rate. You can't go higher, you can't go lower. Um, when you don't have insurance and it goes to Medicare and Medicaid, Medicare is approximately half of the state rate. Medicaid is half of that rate. So any Medicaid patient we transport or Medicare patient we transport, we're getting a quarter to half of what we normally bill. And because of an agreement we signed with the federal government and the state government, we cannot go after the people for the remaining. So that's why you see like the write-offs um, 
of like nine hundred seventy-one thousand dollars, nine hundred eighteen thousand dollars, and fiscal year twenty we wrote off a million dollars. That's money we don't even see. That's automatically written off by our billing company. Okay. Do we have any comments? Councilor McBride? I just have a question. It's more to do with the, the significant increase from the prior year from 45,000 to 75,000. I remember discussing it last year. So I guess my question is, as you know from here and earlier uh, in previous meetings, we're looking to cut anywhere possible just because the budget's way, way out of whack. Um, so I, I'm wondering how substantial would a reduction of $10,000 be to bring you back to last year's budget, which was 66% more than the prior year's budget? Um, it would delay purchasing for, um, as you know, the police department and the Groton Fire Arts Association went to the radio system. Um, we didn't get the radios last year because our, we had our driveway inspected and it was in dire need of being repaired. So we used that money to repair the driveway and that was a $40,000 expense. So I mean, we could do it, but it, it would, um, it would put, off, put off purchasing equipment that isn't gonna go up in price. So just so I understand, because I may have not misunderstood, may, may have not understood the, the significant reason for last year's increase was because you had to purchase equipment to do some paving. Is that correct? It was primarily for the radios. For the radio. So that would make me to believe that that was a one-time purchase, that therefore you wouldn't need that substantial purchase of the one-time radios from last year. That would give you sufficient funds for this year. That would give you a little bit more running room, sort of. Budget we have, we've also had to increase the um, overtime budget for the employees. And how many employees do you have approximately? We have right now five full timers and seven par seven per diems. And and what other expenses would would eat up? I guess the ten thousand plus the, the the twenty or thirty thousand dollars of the As software. As President Kanicki said that his um, contract with Stryker, which is the stretchers and the Lucas CPR machine. Come, his is coming due, ours came due, and we had to buy four new stretchers and the Lucas machines, and that is $37,000 a year. Yeah, $37,000 a year for the next five years. Okay, and I, and, I, and I appreciate everything your organization does. I just think it seems to me that there may be a possible way that you could, you could move on with the 10,000. So I'd like to put a, another number on the floor of $75,000, which again uh, is a reduction of 10,000, but it's more that it's a, it's the same budget level of, of this current year, which was a 66% from last year. I have 10848 for 75,000. Is there any second? Second. So I have a motion by McBride, a seconded by Jones. <coughs> Anybody like to comment on this? Did you want to continue your comments or no, do you think you've covered it? No, thank you. Okay. Councilor Bordelon? Uh, thank you. So I just want to like draw us back uh, a couple years where, um, as it was stated, the Groton ambulance went up, um, what was it like, almost 100 and something percent, town manager? I don't know what the percentage off the top of my head. It was, it was really high. They went for like a, 200 and something thousand dollar budget or something or low to almost three something so yes they came in flat this year but Broughton the mystic ambulance did not come in with that big of a percent increase a year or two two budgets ago um so again i feel that the mystic ambulance seems to always come in very slowly sometimes without any ask for raises um they provide the same vital service they also own their own building so we have to keep that into play. Um, the town of Groton, we provide um, the rental space for them, which comes at, a, I don't know what the lease amount is, a dollar or a hundred or 150 for the year, which is great. It's a great asset to do. Um, but the Mystic um, Ambulance does own their own building to my understanding and has to maintain it at a hundred percent. And they, you know, maintain that structure. They are a major vital asset. They are a second responder to other parts of Groton if needed. You heard tonight that Groton is having trouble finding folks to staff. Um, I think they're asking for a modest increase. Um, and I encourage you to look back in your budget book by looking at the years before 
and yes, they have, uh, you know, the Groton ambulance has, you know, went up drastically, almost a hundred and something thousand dollars. And we did approve it at the time during COVID. And I almost felt like the mystic ambulance left like, kind of looking like I, maybe I should have asked for more. So I think that when they come and they ask, they ask for the right number. And so I just want to commend the director for your numbers when they come in. I've been following this for, you know, the last six years. And, um, Sometimes I'm almost shocked at how low your number comes in. So um, we drive economic development in this town and we want to bring in more people to enhance our community. With that, there comes a cost. And these folks are on that front line in Mystic when people are coming out of those bars late at night. And uh, there's DWIs, there's uh, folks that get injured, heat exhaustion, maybe a diabetic incident. Um, they're right there. And I think it is absolutely essential that we fund their asking price on this one. I do, don't, I do not think this is an area that we want to make cuts. Again, they've always been extremely fiscally responsible coming in at a very low ask, even during COVID, COVID compared to some of their counterparts. Again, not saying that the Groton ambulance wasn't justified an increase, but there's always been way larger in the middle <laughs> side. So again, I encourage this council to give them what they are asking for and look for those cuts in other areas where there's large percent increases. Thank you. And I just want to thank you for presenting. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? I've got a question. Councilor Rusk. Um, can you, um, thank you first of all for being here tonight. Um, can you talk to me about how many residents you pick up on Groton, how many Groton residents you have versus Stonington residents? Uh, last year we picked up 4 1,400 people in Groton and we picked up 1,498 in Stonington. And that was the first year in our history that Stonington actually beat out Groton. Okay. Um, where do you receive funding from, from municipalities? From the town of Stonington and the town of Broughton, and we tried to keep them equal. And okay. the Board of Finance did pass our request. Okay, it's already been passed. Yes. Um, I do know, I remember two years ago that you were asking Groton for more than Stone, or no, it's the opposite, I'm sorry. Um, so I, I appreciate the fact that it's an equal number. Um, what would, it, you said you would lose the, um, the radio system if you lost the 10,000, correct? Well, it would de delay our purchasing the radios and portables for a while. What does that look like? Uh, a portable radio is about three to $5,000 because they're specialized. They're the same radios that the police use, the fire departments. We have them for the ambulances, but none of our none of the ambulance officers or the people that respond have them. Okay. Um, I'm trying to go through your budget here and it's extensive. So I'm, I'm just trying to figure things out. Where do you get the rest of your money from? Insurance. So Okay. So you if, get, if, the if we actually got paid the full amount from insurance, we'd be golden. However, we have bad debt. Okay. You have bad debt? Tell me. That, that's what it's called. It's when people, oh, oh. well, the, the write-offs, but we also have bad debt. Let's say we transport, and we transport a, a lot of people out of downtown Mystic and mm -hmm. on the Stonington side. People give us bad addresses, bad names, and we, we send them to collections. But if... They, if they give us a bad name, we'll never find them. So that's the end of the set. That's for any ambulance service. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Gajewski. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, <clears throat> I was just, uh, Councilor Rusk had uh, taken a most of my questions, but my, I just had one question. What is the average cost to uh, transport um, someone to medical services? The average cost or what, um, what we're allowed to bill? Oh, right. Well, average cost and then what you're allowed to bill. The average cost would be um, each EMT, depending on the, if it's a volunteer, which is, would be $15 or $30, depending if they were not on duty and they decided to take it. And the um, other would be the hourly wage, wage, which is dependent on the minimum wage going up. We want to be above that because uh, within the last year, we've had to lower our standards to hire people, whereas before you had to get two years to, be, to get considered an employee. 
um, you have a guarantee for two years, then we lowered it to one year. We're now hiring people right out of EMT school. And um, so those wages are lower, but the higher people are like $26, $27 an hour, $28 an hour. It, once you add that, there's two of them on the ambulance, then you consider that their health insurance, which we purchased the health insurance through the town of Broughton. And um, to make it attractive, we actually pay 100% of the insurance and it's an HSA, so we fully fund their HSA account because we can't compete with the LMs and the Americans and the Hartford Health Cares. Like President Kendicki had said, you just, we, as private, we can't compete with the major companies. <clears throat> And then um, that leads you. I just want to make sure uh, Stonington approved your um, funding request. Yes, the Board of Finance approved it. Now it goes to the voters. Okay, and um, it was a. It was also. I'm assuming it was also a ten thousand dollar increase. Yes. All right. Thank you. Council Bordelon, is your hand up to make an amended yep. motion? Um, no, there was two motions on the floor so I was speaking for my second time no you spoke to the second the amended motion already you spoke after Councilor McBride so you spoke on the second motion um, sure I'll put an amended motion down because um, I'm looking at my numbers here hold on one second Um, hold on one. Actually, I'd like to do a point of information. Your point of information? Um, to the town manager. Um, I'm just trying to understand here. I did find the numbers. And I'm just looking to making sure I'm understanding because I want to make sure these numbers because I don't have the final budget numbers. I just have what was in the council borderline. Would, I, I just need what your point of information is. What is your question? If you bear with me kindly, I'm getting there. I'm just trying to find the paper here to ask it appropriately. So if you could I ask you for some kindness and patience. Thank you. Um, and I have expressed that I do have site issues due to the chemo that I've had. So sometimes the numbers, it takes me a minute. So bear with me. Thank you. Um, okay, so I'm trying to narrow in the numbers here are small. Um, to the town manager, um, just looking across this, the Groton ambulance was at 105, and then they went up to 341,000. When the Mystic ambulance Council was Bordelon. at 50,000, and it went was defunded down to 45,000. Is that correct? Is that number correct? Was the final number? Council Bordelon, we're not talking about other object codes on our. We are supposed to be talking. We, we went over this. We're not we're not bringing up other items. OK, so I'll, I'll put a motion on the floor. Your motion. Sure. You know what? I, I see the Mystic River Ambulance constantly asked for, you know, very modest increases. In fact, sometimes they're they were cut in some ways. So I would like to put a motion on for eighty thousand dollars. And do I have a second on that? Council Bordelon, you do not have a second on that. All right. Any other um, comments on the 75,000 on the floor from any councilors? Okay, we will take a vote on $75,000 on account number 10848. <coughs> motion by McBride, seconded by Jones. Councilor Bordelon. Um, you just got to bear with me. I'm flipping pages to go back to my other budget book. Um, which number is on the floor? The cut amount or the actual amount? 75000 Is that the cut amount or the actual amount? That is the amended motion. So that's a decrease. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, um, no. Councilor Pacina. Aye. Councilor Rusk. No. Councilor Jones. Aye. 
Councilor McBride. Yes. Councilor Gajewski. No. Councilor Parker. No. I am a yes. That is four. Four to four to zero, that fails. We're back to the main motion of $85,000. Council Bordelon. Absolutely. Council Pacino. Aye. Councilor West. Aye. Councilor Jones. Aye. Councilor McBride. Yes. Councilor Gajewski. Aye. Councilor Parker. Aye. That passes eight to zero <clears throat> to zero. Thank you very Madam much. Madam Mayor, I just wanted to correct for the record that I meant to put 90,000. I know I can't change it now. I was not trying to decrease, but my eyes went over to the wrong side. It was not trying to go 80. It meant to be thought 90, so I do apologize. Thank you. We are moving on. Thank you very much. Thank you, you have a good evening. The next account is 10849. It is the Mystic Knowing Library. It goes back to me, isn't it? And that's me. We are up to uh, Council Parker. Would you like to move that one? I make a motion. I make a motion for $176,000 for account number 10849. I so move. I'll second that. Good evening. Would you like to introduce Hi. yourself and tell yeah. us the synopsis of your budget? Sure. I'm Chris Bradley. I'm the director of the Mystic and Noank Library, which, as, as you know, is part of uh, really a, a system of public libraries in Groton. We're fortunate uh, as Groton residents to have an award-winning main library and a wonderful Bill Library, which has a signature building and uh, that's very much like our signature building. And uh, I know my colleagues from Bill are here also and they can commiserate with the, um, the cost of maintaining these wonderful buildings in our town, but we do do it. And we ask the, um, the town of Groton for uh, what amounts to 19% of our budget. So I think of it as using that 19% to leverage uh, other sources of income that, that we really work hard to provide. We have, um, I call it the three-legged stool. We have support from, from Groton and some from Stonington. Our service is, uh, it's been pretty consistent to about 40% Stonington residents, 60% Groton residents, which makes sense because we, we're located in Groton. And then we draw off 5% uh, of our endowment uh, every year. And then the, the toughest part is the other third, which is annual fundraising. So um, the, the money that the municipality provides uh, is, is really enhanced by those other kinds of fundraising that we do. But if I could just share beyond the budget, uh, tell you a little bit about the library. All of us, all the libraries had a tough time during COVID. Uh, how do you give library service when it's hard to open the library? But uh, last year was a banner year. We had 83,000 visitors just to Mystic and Noank Library. And so I was thinking about that in preparation for tonight. Like, why? Why do 83,000 people come, come to this, this library? Well, of course, the main thing you would think of is to check out a book. We had 38,500 checkouts of print books. Now, that was up from last year, which really surprised me. The other thing was we had 16,000 digital downloads of audiobooks and ebooks. This is, this is where a budget crunch comes in, not just for our library, but for all the libraries in our state. But the other thing is programs. We are offering a series now on food justice, and we're having the, um, the woman who just spoke to you uh, give a lecture uh, as part of this series next week. We have bilingual story times, chess clubs, petting zoos, things, uh, free things that families can do. It, it's kind of tough 
Uh, we, we offer the museum passes also, which helps with families. But uh, it's really nice to have a place like the public library to go to, to bring your kid to story times, crafts, and uh, for education for adults as well. The other thing, we have an epidemic of loneliness in this country, and, and that's a place to combat loneliness. It's intergenerational. There, there are uh, older, retired people there, as well as young children. And um, I always say, if we didn't have a public library, we'd have to invent one. Uh, the other thing is, especially now during tax time, after COVID, we made a decision not to start charging for copies, scanning, faxing, because it's just much easier for people. And we also have staff that can give tech help, especially to older people um, with, with that equipment and downloading things from the internet. And uh, I, don't have, I don't have numbers for that, but I see it. And it, it's very helpful, again, to have a place to go where you can ask someone how to download something onto your iPhone. And um, so that's, I hope I've kind of given the picture of the public library, but it is, uh, it, it, it's a valued resource to our community. At Mystic and Noank is, as, as are the other two fine libraries that you support year after year, and we, we do appreciate that. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Um, Councillor Jones. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you uh, very much. Um, can you just explain in the um, 2023 to 24 budget, you went up 7%, and this budget you're requesting 10%. Can you talk a little bit about what the, what the increase is from? Sure thing. Well, one of the things uh, we, we are trying to increase, it, it, you're not going to believe this, in fiscal year 2007, we received $194,814 from the town of Groton. And over the years, it, it's been rocky, but we reached a nadir. 2019, we got 100,000. So we've been trying to gradually bring that up to a to uh, an amount that's responsible. We're, we're never going to ask for a bigger percentage than we have now. But um, that's, that's what we've been doing. Um, because, and we made a big jump in 2022. We had 115,000 and we jumped to um, 150,000. And so we're, we're trying to gradually increase till we could get up to the 2007 level. Uh, where do you primarily use the money that you get from Groton? How is it, how is it dispersed? You, you know, I can give you some detail on our budget, but basically it's part of our operating budget. Like I said, it's, it's one third from, from the town of Groton, plus Stonington it gives us 12%. So the 12% from Stonington and the 19 from Groton are one third, and then the endowment and then the annual fundraising. So, yeah, operations. Okay, all right, thank you. All right, next, uh, Councillor Gajewski. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, yeah, have you, uh, at, so you said earlier, and I just want to correct that I made sure I heard this correctly. You said 60% of your patrons are from the town of Groton correct. and 40% are from the town of Stonington. Correct. And is that why um, the town of Groton's number is higher than the town, town of Stonington's? Yes, yes. That we, we actually try to keep it, um, you know, 60-40, 60-40 uh, service and, and support. And that that's worked that's worked out pretty well. And like I say, it, it's been consistent. And we can tell from our card holders. We have about the, uh, over six thousand card holders, and you know we have the people's addresses. And um, boo, boo, boo is my next question. Um, what is the, the um, 
main reason for the cost of the increase? Oh, right. Well, a couple things. One, one is this, the digital downloads. Okay, and in this use is increasing as it should, right? Everyone has an iPhone, and, and you're downloading audiobooks, ebooks to your phone, and it's great. But the cost of those digital uh, materials is really is really out of control. I mean, books. Have not, print books have really not increased that much. Over the years, I've been a librarian. They were forever 25 bucks. Now it's 32 bucks. But th there's a big issue going on in the legislature right now, and the Library Association has, has brought it to, uh, I can't remember which committee, but to just stop it with these publishers. They charge libraries more than they charge individual people for, like, say, ebooks and audiobooks. And it makes it really difficult for us. You, you know, some people, they want a certain book. They, oh, there are 300 people in line, you know, because we do it cooperatively. So we are working on that in, on the state level. And I know um, Representative Bumgartner has been very active in that, which, which we appreciate. Um, I'm sorry, what was the other? Oh, oh, the other thing, oh yeah. Okay, well, two things. One is the increase in utilities, which I know everyone suffers from, but that beautiful building has to be heated, and um, we, we, we got a terrible increase in, uh, in oil and in electricity. We did switch to a lower cost provider from Eversource, but you know how it it's still, still going up. So that was, that was a killer uh, this past year. Then the other thing is, uh, you know, the biggest part of our expenses is personnel, as it is with most human service agencies. And we, we have not, we're not a union shop, of course. We've not been able to give people increases for the past three years. And we did put in a pool in the budget of $10,000 that we hoped we could use to do that, and we haven't been able to because of, of those other increases. So um, the rest of it is, you know, it's pretty, uh, pretty, it's pretty much the same budget year to year, but we did get hit with those increases. So I just want to make sure I understand. Uh, is that pool in your, like that pool for $10,000 in salary increases, is that in your budget this year? Yeah, it's it. We put it in the budget, but we haven't been able to spend it. And that's a and that's a new line. So that's a new line item in your budget, if I'm understanding. Yeah, the line item has been there, but we haven't been able to spend it. Okay, got it. Now you I know, understand. Yeah. And then um, my next question: Have you gone to the town of Stonington yet? Yes, we did. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you what happened there. We, we also, we asked for the same increase, 10% 10, 10 from Stonington as we've asked you. They, we ended up with 5%. So that was a good compromise because, you know, we understand. Uh, it's so tough, it's just, it's, bear with me for a minute, to hear what you've been hearing from these agencies and the needs that people have in our community you know that's tough so we understand we were we were happy to get the five percent believe me thank you madam mayor and thank you miss oh. bradley for coming this evening okay thank you councillor rusk i'm sorry i'm doing math here um okay. so the town of stonington i'm guessing you asked one hundred thirty thousand. is no. that correct uh no it was um this year, uh, we asked for one twenty two six fifty. The previous year, for twenty four, we had asked for one eleven five hundred. So, so that was a ten percent increase, and then we we are asking the same of you from one sixty to one seventy six. So, the town of Stonington gave you one hundred sixteen thousand five hundred and seventeen dollars and fifty cents. No, uh, this the current year they gave us one eleven five hundred, and they'll be giving us. Oh, I see what you did. I did you not did the math on the yep. one twenty two. Yeah, so it would be. Um, so they gave you one eleven fifty. 
111500 one, 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 five, one, one, 11500 one, 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 it, they still have uh, a town meeting as well, but um, the, the Board of Finance approved that, so uh, that should, you know, that should be it. I'm sorry, I'm still doing math here. Oh, shoot. Mm -hmm. So, not, okay, David, this is your specialty, not mine. So you're totally you're asking in a total two hundred and ninety three thousand seventy five dollars between the town of Stonington and the town of Groton. That, um, that sounds right. It's about a, again a third of our income is from the two towns. So together, we just talked to um, Mr. Groover Ambulance, mm -hmm. and we've asked them to stay close at fifty fifty. Um, so we are we are contributing quite a bit more to this than yeah. the town of Stonington. And I, I get that we might use it a little bit more, but I'm sure you have other towns that are represented coming. You don't have other? No. You have nobody else coming to your library other than Stonington and Groton well, residents? Well, no, yeah, you're right. But, but it goes, we can't tell who uses it. I mean, but, but we can go by card holders. So that's okay. when we get the addresses. And like I say, it's been consistent 60-40. So it wouldn't really be right to, to try to go 50-50. I mean, that wouldn't follow the service that we provide. And you're right, people you know, use libraries to come from all over, but um, we get that 60-40 from the card holders and kind of assume that that affects the use. Okay. Um. I'm going to move another number. I'm going to move $165,000. That is a $5,000 increase. Um, you've consistently been, uh, we do have three libraries in town. Do you town. have a second on I'm this? sorry. Se second. On. Thank you. Go ahead. Um, we have three libraries in town, and we love them all. Yeah. I, I, I get it. Um, yeah. But we consistently fund you higher than Stonington is funding you. Um, and I would like to see that equal out a little bit. Um, you do have two communities that are coming together, um, and there are no other libraries in our community that have that. Um, so like Mystic River, I'm going to ask that you try to kind of even it out. Um, so I'm going to go with that number. And it was a 10% increase. Sorry. Any other comments? Councilor Borderline. Yes, um, I'm a big supporter of libraries and the outreach that they do for our community. It's the safe haven. It's a place that everybody knows that exists. It's a person who grew up on High Street Mystic. I found myself upstairs trapped up there, hanging out, doing my work. I could walk there. Um, but we are very fortunate that we do have three libraries. And so it's hard for me because I do not want to make cuts to my library because I think education and um, you know having those that's one thing that you know the community can go to, and it's it's the it's, it's the same accessibility for everybody, no matter their income status. They can walk in there and get a book, and, and you know it doesn't matter that that you're all created equal when you walk through that door. And it was as it was stated, um, you know, with the uh, Mystic Ambulance, you know, holding them, um, but you know, there's been increases in other areas, you know. Um, and it's hard to say, you know, what year you have to look at the whole trend of increases, you know. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I, I think, you know, we, we held Mystic to a level where, where they've been very low funded. Um, and uh, they provide emergency service, right? I mean, so it's, it's just really tough. Council Borderline, can you keep the topic to the uh, Mystic Gnomic Library, please? and not ambulances. Um, previous speakers spoke about other budget lines, so I'm doing the same. I'm just trying to 
I'm speaking organically and, and wrapping my please head around it, funding. I'm just asking if you would keep, please keep it to the item on the, the motion on the floor. That's what I'm doing. Um, so it is very important um, to look at this. Um, I guess, you know, the, the number that was presented to you, what would that do to you, I guess? Uh, uh, what would that do for our 25 budget? Yeah, can you add five seconds back to my clock? It's still running and I wasn't speaking, please. Organic issue, sorry. Yeah. We'll, we'll have, uh, we'll have to go back and, you know, and revisit it in light of that. I, you know, I hate to say it, it probably would be once again, that pool for the wages. We do offer, um, and it's through the town of Groton, but it's very expensive health. In, I was listening to the ambulance person. We do uh, offer that wonderful health insurance that the town gives, but it, it's expensive. And we do contribute to the um, <coughs> 401k, but the wages are low and, and probably uh, there probably won't be an increase for the coming year, but we'll go sit down and go back over the budget. I'm not saying I support a decrease, but at all necessarily, but what, what decrease could you support? Is it because there's one that's been put on the table. If you had to propose one right now, based on that number, what would be your counter number? Oh, counter number. I, I would, well, I would say the 5% as opposed to the 10%. Don't ask okay. me to do the math. 168,000. Oh, yeah. And the I cut that's on the floor is what percent currently? 3.125. That's a point of information. I don't think that's correct. It I think is it's correct. a the one, the number on the floor is 3.125 for the 5,000. Off? In addition to the current budget. Right. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. And um, I was going Madam to. Sorry, uh, that didn't come in clear. John, could you just speak and repeat that for me, please? Just that uh, Councillor Gajewski is correct. 3.125 was uh, the 165,000. 5% 5 is 168,000. I will make an amended, or I will change my motion um, I, to. I oh, hi. Oh, wait, she's not done yet. Sorry. Go ahead. No, nope, go. No, nope, it's no, no, like. No. Not my floor. Councillor Borderline, you have the floor. Thanks. Um, if the library, if you're okay with a 5%, that's why I was asking. Um, I would be willing to move that number. Uh, town manager, what would that number be? 168,000. I'd like to move that number if that's a number she is comfortable with. Um, and then that doesn't make it feel like I'm making a cut because I want to make sure that they're supported. Back in, Kayeski. I will remove my motion. And I will remove, and I will remove my second. All right, the 164 has been taken off the floor as a removal of a motion. And I'm just going to reuse my remaining time, if I may. Go right ahead. If this is a cut that she's willing to accept from the library, then I can support that. Um, I have trouble cutting libraries as a whole. But when a director comes before us and says, this is a place I can be, then I can get around something like that. Um, I definitely didn't come in today wanting to cut. Um, but if that's where she feels comfortable, then I can support that and, and um, be fine with it. Thank you. Councilor Kajewski. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I was, I, I apologize for earlier. I it kind of interrupted the numbers. Um, I was trying to make the motion because uh, I thought the 5% would be fair. Um, we would be in in, uh, in unity, I guess, with the um, town of Stonington um, in their increase and in our increase. And um, so um, I just want to apologize for that. And I will be, uh, uh, and with the director being able to absorb um, have a comfort that they can absorb the uh, 
a 5% increase instead of a 10% increase, I'm okay and I will be supporting the event motion on the floor. Thank you. Thank you, yeah, no, we, yeah, we, we understand the pressure that you're under too and we will make it work. Councilor McBride. I, I believe I'm in support of that motion as well. I appreciate the candidates and giving back a little bit. But one question I have, three years without a pay raise is, is kind of upsetting. Do you it think is. you'll still be able to provide the, the employees with that raise with this amount? Yeah, we're gonna have to. Okay, yeah. great, thank you. Yeah, the only, the raise is uh, the raise of the minimum wage, right? That's not enough. Any other comments? All right, I'm gonna take a turn. I have sat here and I've listened to my fellow counselors and I think they're being much more generous than I would, I would be. I honestly came into tonight's meeting and I was gonna put you at 160, what you had at last year's number, because we are looking at a budget that is not easy. People are gonna be getting pink slips this year. There are some situations that, at least I think they might be getting from what I'm seeing in the budget and what I've heard from sections of the budget. I see other places that I have on a list of things that I'm gonna to have to cut and I'm gonna to have to work on these things. But our community cannot sustain, I don't think the budget that we have right now and the increase that is going on. I will vote for the 168, but I'm going to just, I'm just saying this publicly because I want people at home to understand. I am willing to cut actually some of these lower and I, I apologize and I'm sorry because I usually support the library. I am a big supporter of the libraries, mm -hmm. but the way our budget is right now, people are absolutely hurting. And it's very hard to increase some of these things. So I will be voting for it, but I am sorry, but thank you. I don't see any other comments. We will take a vote. Council Bordelon. Can you just uh, state the number that's on the floor? 168,000. It is your motion. Yes, I'm in favor. Councilor Pacino. Aye. Councilor Rusk. Aye. Councilor Jones. Aye. Councilor McBride. Aye. Councilor Gajewski. Aye. Councilor Parker. Aye. That passes eight to zero to zero. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Up next is the Bill Memorial Library, number 10849A. May I make a statement? Yes, go ahead. Um, I just want to let it be known that I am on the Board of Trustees of the Bill Memorial Library. <coughs> I received no money to be on the Board of Trustees, but um, so I will be voting, but um, I just wanted to make that note. Thank you. Um, We are on to Councillor Gajewski. Would you like to make the motion? I'd be honored, Madam Mayor. Um, I move for object code 10849A um, for Bill Memorial Library $65,000. Second, Parker. Motion by Gajewski, seconded by Parker. Good evening. Would you like to introduce yourself and give us a synopsis on your budget, please? Sure. My name is Wendy Pong. I'm the director of Bill Memorial Library, and with me is our treasurer, Rob Zuliani. Uh, also with us is Janet Downs, the president of our board, and Jackie Massett, who's on our board of trustees as well. We've added this year several new programs to our lineup, a weekly music and movement program with live music for children and their caregivers monthly Lego club for families, a series on greener living for adults, and a new speculative fiction book club for adults. We are in the process of uh, building an outdoor learning space to complement our limited indoor space, and we're excited to make our grounds more user-friendly and accessible. We have completed the first phase of our window replacement program that is fully grant funded all the windows on the first floor will either be replaced or restored to historic restoration specifications, which is a total of 43 windows. With your help, last year, we have brought staff salaries up to the 2022 Library Association standards, and I'd like to thank you for that. 
This enables us to attract and retain our excellent staff and deliver exceptional customer service and fun educational programs to the Groton community. And I'll hand it over to Rob. Up next. Good evening. Uh, I have some positive information to share with you. Like Wendy indicated, we used last year's bump to uh, pull our people up with minimum wage. And uh, we're starting in the right direction. We plan on continuing with that going forward. So that was a successful uh, contribution of the town's behalf. Uh, we also have that same old building syndrome where things are need to be fixed and repaired. I'm glad to report to you that uh, we've resolved a lot of those issues. In the past, we completely redid a lot of our roof. We had leaky uh, roofs all over the building. And we had what we called the bucket brigade, where we had people running around with buckets and four or five or six of them at a time, replacing, catching water. And we've resolved all those issues. We've stopped all those leaks. Uh, we've completely replaced our floors. Um, we also had a sewer complication, and we resolved that issue. And these are all in the past, and I can tell you we are not planning or budgeting any of anything for next year because we don't believe we anticipate any problems going forward with our building. Uh, <clears throat> Wendy indicated that our new window program is uh, that we're doing for energy purposes. Uh, that source of fundraising came from the uh, Connecticut Energy Savings Grant Program through the Groton Utilities, and this amounts to $150,000. And we're really going to take advantage of that. And uh, those windows should hopefully help us keeping energy low and uh, expenses going forward in the future. Uh, uh, the reason for our major bump increase this year is the same old problem we've had in the past is inflation is still hitting us pretty heavily. Uh, things are costing more. Uh, we can, which can't be avoided. Uh, things like insurance, outside uh, landscaping, snow removal, uh, books. Books are up 7.7 percent. Our accounting fees for doing our taxes also increased this year. So things across the board are costing a lot more. Uh, we're waiting for some of those costs to s stabilize and label out. But right now, it hasn't impacted us. It's costing us throughout the whole uh, operations. <clears throat> uh, okay. As you realize, we have a small budget for our program. Uh, this year, we had a three hundred and ten thousand, little over three hundred and ten thousand dollar budget. Uh, the actual operations for the library to keep programs going cost about 79% of that. Uh, buildings and grounds, which is an addition, which cost us about 8%, and other things such as the accounting fees and insurance cost us about 13%. So the bulk of it is really just to cover our basic programs handled, handled by the library. Uh, the majority of that is fundrated, funded through our portfolio. We, which takes care of 66% of our budget. It's a little over $205,000. Uh, the grant portion of the, our budget uh, coming from the town represents about nine, actually 19%. And the, the other 15 remaining percent is a result of our uh, <clears throat> uh, fundraising programs and our savings drawdowns from our savings account. Um, we would gladly entertain any questions or comments that you have at this time. <clears throat> Excuse my <clears throat> voice, I'm losing my voice. And... Council Borline. Um, thank you. Uh, I do live in the city and I appreciate the access to all three libraries. Um, I think what you're asking for is a very modest increase. I, I appreciate your um, always forwardness to come forward with a very modest budget and you guys do a lot of outreach and ways to try to draw down um, that ask amount. So I do appreciate that. So 
um, I am in support of the amount that you guys have proposed. So thank you so much. Councilor Jones. Thank you. Thank you, Director, and thank you, sir, for coming. Um, I know we just made a tough decision on the other library that has come forward to us today, and we gave a 5% increase. And looking at your increase, it's, a, it's an 8% increase. That's correct. And I'm thinking about just trying to keep the, the two libraries with a similar increase. There's a, be a 5% increase, which would reduce down to 63 from um, 65, who just shaved 2,000 off of your budget. Is that something that you could you could live with? On? Uh, we could live with it. It's, it would put us in a, a bind of re actually dipping more into our savings programs. Uh, <clears throat> yes, it's, it's feasible. It's possible to do that. So I'd like to put a, a number on the floor for 63,000. Second. Second. And that's well, an added side. Moved Pacino. by Jones, seconded by Pacino. And that's a 5% increase, and that way it keeps the libraries at the same percentage increase that goes through for both of them. Thank you. We'll have to adjust accordingly. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Gajewski. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, and um, thank you to the director and the treasurer. Um, I am in favor of the amended motion. I actually was gonna make it myself um, because I think it is fair to keep everybody at 5%. Um, and I appreciate you guys um, willing to make it work. So thank you. Um, and I yield back that there. Anyone else have any other comments? All right, we'll take a vote on $63,000 for account number 10849A. Councilor Borland. I will not support the lower amount. Councilor Pacino. Aye. Councilor Rusk. No. Councilor Jones. Aye. Councilor McBride. No. Councilor Gajewski. Aye. Councilor Parker. No. I am a yes. Four to four to zero. So we're back to the main motion on the floor, $65,000. Councilor Bordelon. Just want to double clarify I'm hearing through here that that's the ask that they asked for, correct? The amount, full amount that they asked. That is the main motion on the floor, yes. Absolutely, I'll support that. Councilor Pacino. Aye. Councilor Rusk. Aye. Councilor Jones. Aye. Councilor McBride. Yes. Councilor Gajewski. Aye. Councilor Parker. Aye. I am a no. It is seven to one to zero. Thank you very much. Thank we, you. We thank you also. Thank you. Thank you for Most, your support. Motion to recess to April 4th at 6 p.m. All right. You have that on the record. Thank you very much. We are in recess. Recording stopped.